Hey everyone, my name is Mike Griscoviak and I'm going to be talking to you today about the things you need to know about tachycardias while you're working in the hospital. So I'm not going to go into the pathophysiology of tachycardia simply because there's already so many amazing videos out there on that, but rather I'm going to focus on what you have to do when one of your patients has tachycardia, trying to figure out what's causing it and how to treat it. So let's get started. So let's say you get a page that says, patient Jones's heart rate is 170, please call back. What's the first thing that you wanna do? The first thing you wanna find out is, is this patient stable or are they unstable? Because that will change management, that changes how fast you have to act, that changes everything. So let's say they're unstable, what do you wanna do? You wanna shock them, usually synchronized uh, cardio version. So this is the adult tachycardia with a pulse algorithm from the AHA, the American Heart Association. Uh, it's great to look at beforehand when you're on the ward so you kind of know uh, how to acquaint yourself with everything here. But what I want to focus here is this middle part, step three, because this goes through what makes a patient unstable. So whenever we say stable or unstable, these are some of the things that we're talking about. So if a patient has a tachycardia, and they're hypotensive, they're confused, um, they're having chest pain, they have fluid in their lungs. Those are things that make you start thinking that this patient is unstable and you have to go get the crash cart because you're gonna be doing a synchronized cardio version. So when you are thinking about doing a synchronized cardio version, there's a few things that you have to understand. So whenever you are going to be shocking someone, if they are with it or if they're a little bit confused, you want to make sure that you give them some analgesic because you don't want them in pain when you kind of shock them with all this energy. So some of the things that you'll see in the hospital given is midazolam, also known as Bursed. That's usually given at about 2 milligrams IV times 1 to kind of make the person um, a little bit sleepier, but also to forget the fact that you're shocking them. After you th do that, you want to apply the pads either anterior posterior or anterior lateral, which we'll kind of show in a sec, and then you want to do a synchronized cardio version. With almost all of these tachycardias that we're going to talk about, you're going to be doing a synchronized cardio version. The only time you do a defibrillation is during V-fib, so that's really important to underscore. Whenever you do your ACLS classes, um, we always talk about the different jewels that you can do. For the most part, you're always going to do 200 joules. Um, I've had different attendings tell me that it's better to shock someone once with a little bit more joules than shock them two or three times with lower or more escalating joules. It depends on the situation. Obviously, if someone's unstable, um, you might use a higher dosage just to kind of do it once and be done with. These are for biphasic defibrillators at 200 joules. That's the max, um, but there are... 360 joules in the monophasic defibrillators. If you're working in most of the hospitals in the U.S., I'm pretty sure that all of them have the biphasic defibrillators, so they will all max out to 200 joules. That's the defibrillating dose. And then there's always a question on defibrillating or cardioverting patients with a pacemaker or a um, implantable cardioverting device. So the important thing here is you can cardiovert someone uh, that has a pacemaker or defibrillate some, someone that has a pacemaker because clearly that's not working, right? If they have this significant tachycardia and their pacemaker hasn't kicked in or their defibrillator hasn't kicked in, um, that's why you're using these external pads to fix the situation. So what you do in these, pa uh, these patients is you basically just make sure that the pads aren't touching the defibrillator and then you shock them like you normally would. So looking on pad placement, most of the pads that you get in the machines will always tell you where to place the pads. So the anterior lateral is basically putting one pad in the right upper chest and then one in the left lower chest. The anterior posterior here is the gray paddle is on the front, so in the kind of right upper chest. And the, the back paddle, it's actually in white, trying to represent that it's in the back of the patient. It's going to be in the left lower lung area on the back of the patient. So that's how you place the paddles. So now looking at the defibrillating machine. So most defibrillators are pretty easy to use. They try to kind of, st not standardize them, but make them very kind of um, 
intuitive when using because they understand that these are very stressful situations. They know they want to kind of minimize mistakes as much as possible. I know many of you have gone through this uh, ACLs training um, and BLS training, but it's really important to kind of know a couple of things here, especially when we're talking about tachycardias. So step one, you always turn on the machine with the on button. Um, you click CPR, you enter how many joules you want to use on the energy, and then you click analyze rhythm. When you click analyze rhythm, you're going to get a rhythm strip like this, but without the arrows. So that kind of tells you what kind of tachycardia this is. If this is a narrow complex regular, narrow complex irregular, wide complex, whatever it may be. Whenever you're going to be doing a synchronized cardio version, it's important for you to press this bottom button, sync. That's what pops up these little arrows, and the arrows are indicative of the QRS complex. So whenever you press sync, this is where it's important for you to look at this EKG on the, mod on the uh, defibrillating machine and to make sure that those arrows or notches or stars, whatever it is on the machine, are lining up with the QRS complex. If they're not, you have to resync it. So click the sync button again or analyze and then sync to make sure that those um, indicators are lining up with the QRS complex. That's important because if they're not, and they're lining up rather with the T wave or the P wave, then when you, when you uh, synchronize cardio over with this patient, you might cardio over them on a T wave, and that might throw them into VTAC, VFib, and you might actually kill the patient. So that's why syncing is really important.